Fishing like a local isn't just about catching fish. It's about connecting with the environment and the people who call it home. It's about hearing the stories and traditions that have been passed down for generations and sharing unforgettable moments with the people you meet along the way. Fishing like a local is having an experience that stays with you forever. And with Fishing Booker, you can experience it too, no matter where you are. Discover your next adventure on Fishing Booker. This upcoming concert season will be all about the boots, and Tecovis is your stop for the best in Western style. Tecovis has seasonal and limited edition offerings this spring and summer, including men's and women's boots, apparel, hats, bags, and more. All Tecovis boots are made by hand in a time-honored tradition with timeless styles that are always on trend. And Tecovis has first wear comfort with little to no break-in period. It's hard to find this level of comfort paired with this level of style. Stop by your local Tecova store, have a complimentary drink or two, that's WCB style, and shop new styles. The smell of fresh leather and friendly staff are at your service. Many stores even have leather custom branding to make your boots truly personalized. And with regular live music and events, there's no in-store experience like it. If you can't make it into a store, just visit tecovas.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S.com. They offer free shipping on all boots as well as free returns and exchanges and ship right to your door. Go to tecovas.com and find your new favorite pair of boots today. All right, welcome back to the Survival and Basic Badass Podcast, Kevin and Chuck. Today, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about toughening up. Um, a, a big thing when you join the military and, and that kind of thing, um, that they spend a lot of time to kind of help you accept the world you're going to live in. You know, I mean, I think they kind of even go as far as like teaching you to not really see the enemy as people kind of thing. You know, and they they really build it up as they're, you know, kind of villains or something that you don't even, you know, see as human beings. You don't consider them with families. And it makes it a lot easier to do the job kind of thing. A lot of people who have been living a very sheltered life, I think, you see now in the world, you know, we see our colleges that need safe spaces and they need a you know, protection from harsh words and we can't tell anybody anything. And if we talk about a religion, you know, if we have Merry Christmas at the school, no one will know what to do and they'll all go into a frenzy and, you know, people panic and, you know, that kind of crap. So apparently America is getting a little bit delicate. Uh, I think I saw something on Facebook the other day that, you know, uh, people who are, you know, too weak to uh, defend their values and principles, then they're going to be too weak to defend your country. You know, if we're so delicate that we're just upset by anything that happens. So one of our uh, listeners had had messaged us and uh, talked about, you know, it can't all be just campfires and s'mores, you know, when we go out on the weekends and, and do stuff. But it actually you know, we need to kind of prepare our families for what the world is and for reality. You know, if your kids think that food comes from the grocery store and, you know, like there was always kind of the joke on the internet, you always see about how, oh, well, you shouldn't, uh, you know, go hunting and kill deer because you should just get your meat from the grocery store so that way no animals are harmed, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, that's how how people kind of look at things is, you know, if we're so removed from the reality of the world and we really do have a sheltered life and our kids have had it pretty good. You know, I think we all, you know, it doesn't matter what generation you're from, you know, if you're from my parents' generation, they'll be like, Oh, you know, you kids are soft. You don't understand, you know, you didn't have the hardships we did of, 
you know, not having refrigeration or, you know, whatever. I don't know. My parents had refrigeration, but you know what I mean? Um, the, the tough, you know, the walk into school uphill both ways every day and whatever. But then you go back to the next generation and they're like, yeah, but you know, the kids don't really have the same things. We didn't have, you know, the internet like we do. We didn't have, you know, whatever. And then you go into the next generation and, oh, well, you know, they didn't understand. And, and it just keeps getting easier and easier <clears throat> where we're not confronted with so much. You know, it's all <coughs> seems to be focused on feelings and, and emotions. And that, that's one of the big things that mil the military really tries to separate from people. Um, at least back when I was in boot camp, you know, I don't even know anymore, but the idea is you're supposed to be strong and, you know, independent and self-reliant and you also need the confidence. You know, I, I just was dealing with uh, a, a coworker at work was kind of getting in trouble and it, it turns out one of his big problems was he didn't have the confidence to step up and do anything. He kind of would stand by and, and watch things play out and never was really assertive to, you know, take charge and, and find out what's going on. And he ended up not learning because he wasn't asking the questions and they basically, you know, took him a rung down and said, Hey, you know, you got to kind of relearn things because you're not progressing like you should. Well, that's kind of the whole problem is people are not progressing like they should. And I think that's kind of what it comes down to is, you know, we need to really advance as, as an individual, you know, you don't need to be coddled and sheltered and, and protected. You need to learn how to thrive and, and dominate, you know, how to really accomplish. Cause even if you're the caring, compassionate guy, and that's where, you know, we approach the world from, you can't take care of other people unless you can take care of yourself and unless you understand how the world really works. And I think that's something we need to expose our spouse, our children, you know, our family in general and our friends. And it's a reality in these, you know, coming hard times of something we need to prepare for. So, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a, a really a, a big deal. You know, um, people are confused about what gender they are and concerned that they're using the right gender pronoun, and they're worried that you're going to hurt this person's feelings if you use this certain word and all that sort of stuff. But you know, when there are wolves roaming the streets, people don't worry about that stupid shit. There you go. You know? I I did just see on the internet that now at science has decided that at age five, we can tell what gender a person is by their voice. Oh, and I'm thinking thanks. we don't have to wait till they're five. There's a way to find out right now, <laughs> the minute they're born and with sonograms, even before that, we can right. tell you, we don't have to wait. Uh, um, what are you going to do, man? And I, you know, I see a lot about a lot of this shit about toxic masculinity. Yes. Um, yeah, there are some assholes out there. Well, Kevin, but, I mean, come on. But I mean, uh, the truth is, those are the those those assholes are the people you want when the Vikings show up. Exactly. It's that and, boat over there on the on the horizon. I wonder what that is. Yeah, that's when you want that asshole. It's it's hard to uh, it's hard to kind of distill that that idea. <clears throat> idea in kids when you're living in a first world country yes and uh you know you you never had to uh, spend a day without you know without food you never really had to to be hungry i mean sometimes you have to kind of uh do that shit to yourself just to just to stay ready you know yes no exactly right so that's the thing so i think you know i just wanted to kind of talk about some different ways we can expose our families to things without being harsh yet bring them up to speed so that they're not terrified when things happen. You know, there's so much going on in Virginia and all this stuff and we see the world changing and you know, you need to kind of have your family prepared for what may come. 
you know, maybe it's not Virginia, maybe it's something else, but you know, the world's changing and it's moving fast and you need to kind of be aware and prepare your family. Now, one of the things, you know, I had mentioned, well, you know, people see that the food comes from the grocery store. A lot of people who become vegetarians or vegans, that kind of thing, it's because they decide that it's so disturbing, you know, how, how animals are killed and whatever. But if people go out and really understand the process and life and the value of life, you know, then, and, and that's where kind of morals kind of come hand in hand. You know, people are like, well, you know, they become desensitized with playing video games and, you know, whatever. I don't know what video games people play, but whatever. They, they do that, Call of Duty or whatever it is, and they're just murdering people left and right and blah, you know, whatever. But that's where you have morals and a foundation and you teach people respect and the value of life. And I think if you go out and you actually um, interact with people and treat people with respect, you'll see the value in life. But I think also value comes from making decisions. The more decisions you make, the more value you have because you're an independent thinker and a creator. And right. that's, you know, what changes life. But if you take your kids out hunting and show them, you know, how nature works and what really happens and what the natural order of things are, they get a better, clearer picture. You know, when you've gutted an animal and you know how to take care of yourself, you know, you can't take somebody from the happy classroom and then take them out into the brutal world and expose them to, you know, gutting a deer or things like that. In day one, it's a process and a culture. And uh, the American culture has really gotten away from that. And we actually seem to do anything we can to take people away from that masculine kind of, you know, society where the man is take charge and the defender and the, you know, provider and whatever, because, you know, women are strong and independent. And obviously women can take care of themselves and do their own thing. But we've really gotten away from that self-reliance. And by the more skills you develop, you realize that you're capable and that you don't need anybody else and that you can kind of, you know, take care of business. You don't need the government to give you handouts or to do things for you. But the less we know about providing our own way, the more trouble we're going to get into because people won't have the confidence to move forward. Right. I think the more, uh, the more struggle you have under your belt, the more competent and the more capable you are. You know, most, some of the most uh, competent people I know had shit childhoods, you know, right. All parents. And, um, you know, I'm not saying you need to start drinking more and beating your kids, but, but it might help. It might, it might not hurt, but, uh, you know, I think a, a a firm father figure in a kid's life is a really important uh, important thing. You know, somebody that has their back, but somebody that's also going to correct them when they're wrong. And um, you see that a lot. That uh, the massive ma a massive number of the people that are incarcerated had bad father figures. And right. uh, you know, as men, it's it's kind of um, our obligation to step up. And be involved in our kids' lives and be involved in educating them and teaching them, correcting them, encouraging them. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff that, you know, we can all look at ourselves and, and see the places where we failed and where we let our family down. Um, but, you know, there's, you know, that sort of thing shouldn't hold you back. Right. You know, it's only just more opportunity for you to get moving and, and uh, keep it going in the right direction. Well, that's it. You know, every time you make a mistake, it's that getting up and moving forward. Um, one of the big discussions, uh, you know, in, in our house the, over the weekend was uh, one, one of the kids had graduated from college and she completed a four-year degree, which is a big deal and very impressive. And then at the same time, she gets the report card and is like, oh, but I got a C in this class. And 
she was devastated and focusing on the sea and, oh, this is so horrible. It's going to ruin everything and all this stuff. And it's like, wait, how do we focus on the little bit of negative instead of stepping back and seeing the bigger picture of, hey, I just completed a huge accomplishment and this is going to open doors for me and help me move forward. But my point is that people don't have the confidence or the self-reliance anymore. And we just don't seem to focus on those values. We focus on the nonsense, you know? And of course the same kid comes out of college and thinks, well, it's not wrong that they made the uh, age of smoking 21. It's wrong that they didn't just outlaw it all together. And I'm like, yeah, that's a kid of mine right there. Uh, Damn college. You know, ruins everybody. But uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's all I can tell you. Ban smoking cigarettes and legalized pot. Legalized pot, because that only sounds right. Uh-huh. <sighs> Damn kids. But uh, so moving right along. But that's it. You got to get your kids out and really do the things, you know, the hunting and teaching them. But also talk to your kids. Talk to your kids about what's going on in the news, why something's disturbing to you or why it's not. You know, why something's a victory for America, a victory for freedom and a victory for self-reliance. Or if something's a negative to, a you know, self-reliance. But also get your kids out. Don't get caught up so caught up in your world where you're so busy working that you're not spending time and you're just letting the schools and, you know, the whatever aftercare programs or daycare or whatever it is you do, you know, raise your kids. Make sure you're putting in the time and actually helping them understand the world and navigate it. So when things get weird and funny, then they're able to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, one of the things that really brought me along this path is I was kind of looking at Virginia, and and Virginia's got some scary stuff going on over there. Yeah, they're they're really, uh, they really seem like they're escalating things. It doesn't seem like it's winding down. It's winding up. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's weird because it's like really the same thing that New York's already done. It's the same thing that California's already done. But somehow they seem to want to push that they're down for the confrontation. You know, it seems to be escalating that way, whether it's true or not. But when the governor goes out and says, hey, you know, I'm going to uh, increase our corrections budget so that way, uh, you know, we're able to deal with people as we have to confront them. And when we see the UN is hiring uh you know, disarmament specialists, you know, people get worried. Right. I think that, uh, I think that, you know, people are going about this thing the, the wrong way in Virginia. It's really uh, kind of, kind of frightening. The government should, should be de-escalating situations like this, but it seems like they're eager to have people ended up getting shot at. Right. It, it does seem that way. And I, I feel like, If it ends up being a victory for Virginia, then other states are going to follow. If they're like, hey, look, they were able to go get the guns and actually shut it down, then, you know, other states are going to just kind of jump on board with that kind of thing. Because when you're in charge, you want a disarmed population. You know, that's kind of a win for uh, somebody who wants complete control. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, it, you can look at it in a, a hundred places around the world right now. Um, Iran, Venezuela, Hong Kong, and a lot of these governments are just killing people and there's no recourse. Uh, there's nothing that the government can't do because there's nothing that the uh, population can do. To stop them, right? They're right. just stuck and they're powerless. So teaching your kids to be confident and understand that, you know, there's always hope and you can stand up. It's important and it's more important now than, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I guess always through history, we have to defend freedom. You know, it keeps coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had somebody ask me why I was teaching my kid how to shoot and make, make pipe bombs. Uh, bombs. It's because I'm dope and I do dope shit. 
Well, that's, you know, that's a given. And, and two, you know, a, a, a catalog of knowledge like that makes you a dangerous person when it comes to the government. You know, the government doesn't like dangerous people. They don't like anybody that can, you know, stand up, stand against the tide and push back. And, you know, there are fewer and fewer of us left out there. You know, yeah. more and more of us are sucking up. You know what? The cable works. Netflix comes in. My lights turn on when I hit the switch. My refrigerator is always full of food. I like I food. I about shit. But, you know, that, that shit doesn't disappear first. That's the last thing to start disappearing. Yeah. No, exactly. And, you know, you need to kind of prepare your families for, you know, what may come. And prepare them with, you know what what they uh you know family operational security kind of thing what you tell people what what kind of stores you have what they tell people about what guns you have whatever and you know it matters and the more you know the more your kids understand what's happening in the world around them around you the more your wife understands what's happening in the world around you the more your you know your husband your whoever people in your life then the better they are to, you know, protect your family and to take care of you and to keep, you know, keep things disciplined, we'll say. You know, it's not a matter of just knowing how to fight. It's a matter of understanding why and what you believe in and what your values are and being prepared for it. And if you have morals and values and, you know, a clear plan of what your family should be, then you're going to be able to survive and get through the tougher times. Right, right. And as, as uh, the great American poet Be Real once said. Be real, sure. Yeah, when the shit goes down, you got to be ready. I mean, it's a lot of these things that we do, you know, that we prepare for, that we train for, that we practice at may never be become a reality you know right sure but every uh every skill that you have is a tool in your toolbox and uh you know if it's if it's changing a tire on the side of the road or it's um you know hunting hunting for deer everything that you you learn how to do is an asset that you have and it makes you more reliable more uh uh more more competent to uh, take care of every life, every day matters. You know, the more trouble that you have to deal with every day, day in, day out, the more situations you put yourself in, the more prepared you are to take on things that you don't see coming. Right. No, so that's, you know, you just need to get your family in order and have things, you know, just keep building towards a stronger family. And what I can tell you is the more time you spend with your family, the more independent you make your family, the more you make them self-reliant, the confidence and I guess it's really just confidence and abilities and skills that they have is going to make them happier and it's just going to take them further in life. Plus, if things do go bad, they're going to be able to handle it and deal with it in a way better situation. And that's what it comes down to. You know, that's why we prepare us to take care of our families. And if you can make your family stronger and better, then that's really where you should be focusing. Now, the other day I was listening to um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talk. Yes. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yep. Um, and uh, somebody asked him a question about, about what what would you do for to be prepared for um, to be prepared for like a meteor impact, like a major um, uh, world changing event? And I thought it was funny. One of the things he said was, "Get proficient in a distance weapon." He said, uh, "He said everyone talks about lightsabers like they're the coolest shit ever." He goes, "But you got to be three feet away from somebody to kill him." He said, get us yourself a bow and arrow or a rifle. I thought that was pretty funny coming from him. Sounds right. Uh, he also recommended learning hand-to-hand -hand combat. So uh, 
his school points points just went up a little bit for me. All right. No, that's it. We just all got to keep moving forward. And, you know, the more you practice skills, the more you're out there doing it, the more, you know, success you're going to have in life. And I got to tell you, you know, a kid that can take, you know, martial arts or learns to defend themselves and just the confidence and stuff they instill is going to take them further in any, you know, avenue that they choose, choose for their career path. It's all going to, you know, move them forward. So, you know, yeah. maybe a little less times with the video games and a little more outdoors and actually doing, and it'll give them the confidence to help them push forward. Well, I don't know about the video games. Maybe we do want to desensitize our kids a little bit. Yeah, you're going to, you're going to go with the, uh, uh, Call of Duty, you know, and it's not, it's not murder if they're communist, Chuck. They're yeah. Just really people. Well, yeah. Yeah, I definitely perspective. All right. I definitely used to play a lot of SOCOM with the boys growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but that's a little bit older now. So, you know, who knows? Yeah. There's always games out there, and I think we were shooting, you know, Hajis or something. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> right? I don't know what they're called these days. But yeah. uh yeah, I mean that's always, you know, something to keep an eye out for. The bottom line is if you're gonna expose them to more and more hardcore violence, it's also important that you instill values and morals and understanding of life and the respect for people and to understand what right and wrong is. And if you do that, then you're not going to have a problem exposing them to the other stuff and to the violence, mm -hmm. but being prepared, you know, the more grounded you are and the more peace you are with yourself, the less likely you are to get into trouble. That's right. So if you guys are enjoying the podcast and you have other topics that you think we should talk about or things, you know, you might just want to ask Kevin or me, um, you can email us at preppingbadass at gmail.com. Now, a lot of times when we get an email, people are like, oh, I can't believe you responded. Well, I mean, Kevin is a bit of a celebrity and, you know, I understand that, but, you know, we get back to everybody. We just sometimes are a little slower than we should be. Um, also, if you get around to uh, leaving a review wherever you listen to podcasts, um, if any of you still use iTunes or whatever else, you can throw a review up there. We appreciate it. And that really does a lot to help out the podcast. I We haven't had a lot of uh, new reviews lately. So if you haven't had a chance to, to go over there, um, you know, please take a minute and just, uh, you know, Give us five stars or four stars or whatever you think. Give us zero stars if you hate us. But uh, go over there. Us. Go over there and uh, uh, rate our podcast and recommend it to people. Recommend it to your friends. You know, we're not one of the podcasts that uh, has a huge budget. We're not one of those podcasts that runs a million commercials. We try and, uh, you know, try and be down to earth with you guys and, and stay in touch with you guys. And honestly, I've made a lot of friends doing this podcast. Just, uh, you know, people on the Facebook group and people I've talked to uh, through email I really have a lot of, you know, I've really met a lot of interesting people. So, um, you know, if you get a chance, go over and do some uh, post some stuff on Facebook. Uh, show us what you're up to. I'm definitely interested in seeing what you guys are up to, what you guys are, uh, you know, shooting out at the range or or, um, you or know, maybe new knives you're building or whatever you're into. Exactly. We're exactly. down. I'd love to see some videos on uh on canning and food preservation on the Facebook. Cause it's not something I really have a lot of, uh, uh, talent in. So if, um, some of you guys could, that get into that could jump on there and, and, uh, you know, give us a few pointers. I'd love that. Survival and basic badass podcast is a proud member of the self-defense radio network. Mm -hmm.